Hi. Oh, I just wanted to thank you guys for, for going to the Patreon. These guys down here. You see this line down here? Those are the thugs, bro. Keeping the lights on. I appreciate you guys, man. That's just hype. Link in the description if you want to find out about it. What's up? Welcome back, my fellow warlock brothers and sisters. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be done a couple days ago, but I'm married with two kids. Everybody in the entire house is sick, except for me. So that's kind of cool. At least we're not sick. But yeah, I'm the whole house is sick. So I've been late on this, but we're here. We are. I mean, get comfortable. Hey, get comfortable. Welcome to the plague quarter. Today's going to be Noth. Hagen and Lothab. I had to look up the second guy's name because I don't even know what to pronounce it. It's Hagen or Hagen. I'm not sure. It's a stupid fight regardless, but we'll get there in a second. You guys seem to like the last one, which is cool because it saves me time of having to script all the videos. I really like, hey, I hate having to script them. So I'm glad we could do it this way. Second off, before we begin, I want to touch on a few things. Okay. A few of them. Okay. The first one is the hot topic. I get asked about it all the time. It's flame caps. Yes, you should be using flame caps all the time. Well, with your execute phase, I wouldn't go far so far as using them during the trash packs. And like, you know, if you're trying to save some money, cause they're like 30 gold, 40 gold, 50 gold per, per flame cap. And I don't know if you were watching, if you weren't here, if you met me recently, then I'm sorry, but I've been making videos telling everybody to stock up on flame caps for like a year. So I hope you're one of the crew like us who stocked up on 4,000 back when they were, you know, 20 silver a pop or whatever, but either way, they're very important to use. They are, it's, it, it's an 80 firepower. It's 80, pretty much 80 spell damage when you're well, not spell damage though. So, Cause it doesn't like cross over to demonic pact, which kind of sucks, but either way it's eight, virtually 80 spell power strictly just on your fire damage when you're spamming soul fire at the end, which remember you're going into your meta. If you have time for meta, if you have a second meta, you're going to be blowing a meta, whatever cooldowns you have, your haste gloves, whatever else you have. And then flame caps, add all that together while you're spamming soul fire is a pretty big deal. The next one is the rank one shadow bolt sniping. Uh, I use the word sniping because it's edgy and I think it's cool, but really it just means that you are quickly casting a rank one shadow bolt on this mob over here and then burning it back into the boss. The point of this is that it's minimal downtime. People ask why not just use a, a max rank shadow bolt. Normally I'll, I'm going to use Grobulus as an example on Grobulus. You want to put as much spell, I mean, as much damage into Grobulus as you possibly can, right? And you stopping to hit Grob, stopping from hitting Grobulus, so you can turn and, and look at this ad over here and put a full two second, whatever cast time on him. It's not as good. So it's better just to turn that way, throw a quick one second shadow bolt off, get your decimation procs, turn back to the boss and burn him. Okay. This happens throughout the whole raid. I can't tell you every time, I can't tell you the amount of times I'm sniping something in a raid. On trash packs, if there's three ads left and then and one's at full health and the other ones are dying, I'm going to snipe one. I'm going to full soul fire into the other one. Okay. So that's kind of what that gets brought up a lot. Why people use it. Lastly is consumables, which we can go into the footage. Consumables, just make sure that you have consumes on. You know what I mean? Like obviously use consumables as, as much as you possibly can. There's no reason why you shouldn't be using them. Okay. Um, that is your oil. Like I said, I like to have oils made just in case. So I, if you're holding W, you don't have to sit there and stop and put a new oil on fish food or fish feast, whatever. Or if you have firecracker salmon, uh, snapper extreme for the hit food, whatever you want, make sure you have a flask on. This is back when we were using candies for the thing. So just ignore the candy buff. And then you have a flask, obviously, right? Anything outside of that is extra to bring in, bring anything that you find that you can use. Okay. We're not mages. We can't spell steel. You know, you, hey, you know what I'm talking about that buff, right? Yeah. We don't get to do that. Okay. Anyway, onto the footage. Just see, did I miss anything? Let me pull my notes up real quick. Yeah. Let me see. Mm hmm. Cool. All right. We're going. First thing here is you. Oh, 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 actually, you know what? First thing I want to talk about again is this is the is the logs. So you need to pull up your log. This is very important on these three fights specifically. It's very, very important that you pull up these logs. Okay. So I have overall here. Why is it not? This is uh, if we go here to our overall from last to this raid. Okay. Just on your overall page, click this and then you'll see just in case for those that are watching that don't know how to use logs. You'll see your kill times. Today's bosses are Noth, Hygen, and Lothab. Two of them are some of the lowest ranked bosses, kill time bosses in the game. This log is from three weeks ago. So our kill times are already under one minute. So in this example, you would see a minute and 11 seconds. You need a doom right off. Um, doom is a, is doom is literally one minute long. You have to fucking, the fight starts, put a doom up. You, like if this is this situation where 111, I hope every day you guys are going faster. Obviously we'll talk about Noth now as we get into Noth in like, a, like one minute. But I just want to bring it to your attention. If you're in a guild faster than ours, 
or better then you're gonna have lower kill times so make sure you i mean you if you're in a guild better than fusion you probably already not one probably not watching this and two you already know what i'm about to say let's watch your fucking kill times under 60 seconds you're not dooming if you have enough time doom if you're at a minute one on a fight guess what i'm not dooming fairly anymore i'm in an agony twice you know so make sure you pay attention to that okay now we can actually do it the footage huh is this it this is it right here cool all right so to start this fight i want to get meta on cooldown right away because i'm about two minute i'm about two two there's a couple things a couple few big things here i'm about two minutes from pulling the boss i know this because i'm in comms i hear them talking in comms i know what the strat for my guild and stuff like that this is where you guys had to judge it this is a good meta pack right because meta will be off cooldown before the boss and usually you guys are pulling this right and then as you see him already going on my tanks already going over here he's going to pull the next pack into us now about these two packs something that you need to realize which you can tell by there's a lot of immunes going on right these okay there's two types of mobs in this thing there's infectious ghouls okay i guess there's three types there's infectious ghouls there's the gargoyles which are the ones posted up by the stairs which we'll get into but you know don't worry about that and then plague slimes plague slimes are immune to your seed of corruption you cannot land a seed on them seed will not blow up and hit them i'm not pretty sure i don't know if anything in our toolkit hits it i know boomies my boomy can't hit it with my uh whatever it's called my mind seer doesn't hit it so it's like it really shitty so for that reason you blow your meta you do your time meta hits them meta seems to be doing great i don't i don't see any immunes on my fire so i think emo aura is fine so meta obviously you're gonna meta an emo aura we know this but what you're seeding is very important here in terms of your overall damage i figured this out week one when i'm spamming into the plague slimes who are immune and i'm wondering why my damage is so low one what the fuck's going on i have no damage that's because they're immune to everything you do so you need to make sure that you're seeding into the ghouls right here you see no issues you see the ghouls going down those are where my numbers are coming from is only the ghouls so seed the ghouls seed the ghouls if you i think i have one here where i don't i think i'll do one here somewhere where i mouse over and i seed a plot I, i'm thinking out loud right here. oh yeah i do right here right here right here. i literally seed a slime just to see what happens and look what comes up one immune i'm talking you can't see my face but i'm streaming this and i'm like yo oh they're all immune this is a three week old one see how it says immune so i know a lot of you guys figured that out but just in case you didn't seed off and only off the infectious ghouls okay well i'm glad we figured that out this is where your meta goes like i said um these are also a very good pool if you back it up a little bit this is a very good pool for you to meta get bop and then challenging how right challenging how is a 15 second cooldown 15 second cooldown 12 second cooldown 50 second cooldown that uh aoe taunts everything around them now as a demo lock you're probably getting bopped i hope you are getting if you're not getting bopped then you need to clip this and tell them to bop you you need to be bopped that's where all your damage comes from right get damn it get meta go in there emo or a bop challenging how you challenging how by the time you get to your map you challenging how all that you have all of these mobs on you absolutely nobody in the raid is taking damage including you and everybody can just blast and all the tanks can go up here and start pulling more while you're tanking these guys and getting healed after the bop well it's still probably be done but dead before the bop if you guys are all seat like you know uh it's a little bit slow over pull because of the plague slimes i forgot but yeah you'll be coming you'll be fine tanks over here already pulling i'm trying to like right here's a good example i don't do it but now is a good example where i could have when this was when this mob right here was at like four or five percent i should have sniped it right you can one of two things i can turn around rank one shadow bolt get my soul fires spam soul fires into these targets or since it's three targets i can see um as affliction this is one of those things where i would corruption this mob so i can corruption a couple of these mobs so i can get eradication procs as demo you don't really care about you can you can put up a corruption while you're moving around because it is better than no damage but like why are you moving around right now i'm moving around because i'm not in range right i'm gonna get in range i'm immediately spamming seeds like pets not attacking which is one thing i, I think i send them in here soon one thing i would like to mention that i am guilty of as you can tell because i am not perfect in the least slightest um is your pet should be a not afk like almost ever right now i have mine baked into my i have a macro now this is three weeks ago now i have put a slash pet attack macro which i'll put in the description um for seed of corruption only seed of corruption i don't do it for my shadow bolt uh, oh i do it for emulate too i do it for emulate and seed of corruption reasoning here's my reasoning you have to be careful with seed of corruption when you do it because your pet will charge in or sh sh shadow bolt and seed of corruption say you're precasting a shadow bolt pre-fight you precast a shadow bolt guess what your pet's doing he's running in right when you press right when you go like this and you press your shadow bolt key your your fell guard's going and he's running into the boss you guys pulled early it's your fault this has happened before ask baron he knows yeah. um because of that you don't want i don't like to have a pet attack on my shadow bolt instead i'll put it on my emulate because i'm generally not go oh, another reason why is kt you know the fight kt um if you say a soul weaver comes out one of the trash packs the soul weaver comes out or anything a, mo uh, a skeleton or a, a, a bomb and you press shadow bolt to go you know put a shadow bolt on him it sends your pet in there he charges in you pull the whole thing trust me it happens 
So because of this, I put pet attack on immolate. This is a big deal because immolate, I typically won't immolate something unless it's good value. It's a good value immolate unless I want my pet to attack on that, right? So because of that, on single target, you almost never need to worry about any mistakes with Felgar. Just keep it on immolate. It is just a cat. Simply, it's a cast immolate, drop a bar, slash cast uh, pet attack. No, slash pet attack. Sorry. I'll have the macro in the description. I use a mouse over. It's more detailed than that, but TLDR, just slash cast immolate, drop down, slash pet attack. Um, I put it with seed corruption because you don't ever have that issue. My pet will charge in, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm seeding a lot of stuff. That's when I want him. I think this was before I have it. The point is make sure he is attacking. You are a demo demonology warlock, demonic pack. That is your whole fucking reason you're there. Make sure he's attacking. This week or right here will be in the description below as well. Continue. Carry on. Anyway, I'm spamming seeds. We already know what to do here. Spamming seeds. I'm spamming seeds. These seeds are low right now. I'm still spamming seeds. I could have stopped at one point. So like right here, if you're getting real cheeky, you see how they're getting low. Skull's getting low. I can snipe right now. Snipe a rank one off him and then go with soul fire the high ad. I'm going to be more damaged than whatever I'm doing right now. I don't know why I wasn't doing that. We have two more ads coming up. I'm trying to fix the weak or apparently skip past these ads. You are it's a two ad situation. I will double emulate. I didn't in this case, but I typically always will emulate and corruption the high mob and then I'll go pump into the other mob, but it kind of it, it dies so fast. I don't even know at this point, you know? So for this boss, the biggest thing that you can do for this boss for, I don't like to put the word parse on it because this is less of a parsing guide and more of like how to do more damage throughout the raid. Cause it's a very big deal, right? Um, Especially the demo lock, because your 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 big strengths come from how much raid damage you can do. The one thing about this boss that is very important, but in terms of parsing and less on the damage things, there's two things. One, ignore the ads. Okay, don't sit there and feed in the ads. Don't hold your meta until the ads come out. As you see, we pull the boss right here. Okay, first off, the biggest thing if you're talking about in terms of parsing is you have to kill him before this teleport comes up. You need to kill him between a minute and 25 seconds. If you're talking about parsing. Uh, otherwise you can never you will never ever get a halfway pretty much a parcel on this fight unless you your your guild is killing this before he teleports right it's just a time thing obviously if you're in a guild that's not doing that in time that it, we're not knocking you that i'm just letting you know if you're frustrated about this fight and you're wondering why i can't get 98 seven five seven nines hundreds whatever it is you're looking for and your guild is not killing it before teleport that's why you need them to kill it before teleport okay biggest thing about this fight Okay, carry on. Um, we are killing it before teleport. So the one thing I we can do about these ads, you can't, there's no reason to pat them. There's no really real reason to do anything to them. You're just going full single target. The more single target you have, your guild has the chance, the higher chance of this boss dying before he teleports. And that's the goal. Like I said, so these ads come out um, as affliction. I would corruption them, but I don't, I, I did early corruption as a demo lock to get molten core procs, but instead they're, look how fast they're dying. Instead, what you should do is wait for them to get, guess what? under 35%, which you see right now, one to two of them are, I will immediately cast a soul fire because I already have my proc going. Cause I already had, that's what the wings and the 8.8, .8, that's a timer on it and the fire around my body. I already have at some point here, I was already casting a shadow. I think I mouse it over. You can look and find it out right here. I'm immolating. I'm immolating. I have an incinerate on board. I'm in shadow bolting, I'm shadow bolting. Oh, I'm saving my incinerate, my molten core procs. That's why I'm saving my molten core procs for when I go into my soul fire stage which I guess I didn't touch on in the beginning because I assume that you guys watched this the first video, but just in case you didn't watch the first video, your opener is a shadow bolt. It's a place it's it well, it's a pre cat. It's a pre potion wild magic and then a shadow bolt. Okay. After that shadow bolt, you're going to go you, oh, oh, plan it with your lust. You want meta with lust, but typically people less off rip. You want to meta and then emulate corruption and doom. That is so the emulate the corruption, less value on the corruption because it's not that long of a dot. Emulate was extended by nine seconds. Thanks to the talent molten core so because of that you want to put emulate corruption and doom because they will snap the 20 percent extra damage that your the metamorphosis gives you that 20 percent damage will be on your dots as well it's not it, your your dots will if you don't know snapshot right that's the word i'll use it kind of takes the pictures of your stats when you put it up there so if you go to put a doom up your the game goes let me take a picture of your stats and your percent damage or percent damage and stuff like that well i can't crit but percent damage and then I'm going to add that to that doom. So when the doom blows up in 60 seconds, it doesn't matter if you're dead, right? You're going to get a 20% buffed doom. Emulate corruption, whatever. So you, and no matter what, you to, corruption and emulate both have a higher damage per cast than shadow bolt. So I don't care if you're seeing logs out there with people doing it backwards. You got to realize logs are logs. Logs are a meme for most of the part. You need gear, you need funneled, you need PI, you need all these things that not everybody, not everybody can get, right? That makes sense. The thing that I just because somebody is all 99s does not mean they're playing correctly right that's not we've already proven this on stream a million times on fights like these i can pull up a log right now 
and go see no go see top 10 20 demo locks in the world not sniping these ads right now that are in front of our face and you cannot look me in the eye and tell me that's not worth to fucking do that right you already know it's worth it so the same people who think that they're correct about putting doom or, 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 or dotting meta and then shadow bolting you're incorrect all you're doing is spamming shadow bolts and meta spamming shadow bolts and meta is less like a damage per cast of emulate and corruption is more which means what it means you want to be casting them you're not chain casting emulate and corruption because their damage over time abilities you, you can't chain cast them you can't chain cast doom because it's a 60 second cooldown after a 60 second pop right so meta then put your dots up and then go into your shadow bolt rotation okay good i'm glad we did that anyway snipe these ads right now you see me shadow bolting something i don't know what i'm shadow oh it must have been an ad because i got all my buffs I'm, I sniped one of these ads going down and now I'm already, I didn't even, this is why I say you to use a mouse over because I'm not even untargeting Noth the whole time. I just point at what I want. I press, you know, my Naga button seven, which is my snipe. snipe. I have my procs and I'm full sending soul fires with the trinket proc up right now and look molten cores going off into Noth this entire time. That's, just, that's like all you can really do right here. My molten cores out. I put my dots back up. I'm going to soul fire for my last one. I'm back into my shadow bolts. He's going to go. I want to put up an immolate and then a corruption which is what I hope I'm doing. I'm already soul firing. Didn't even look at me, bro. Didn't even put the emulate up. Do not do that. Do not do what you are seeing right now. You see how long I just went without like, look, this is how, this is how it should be. When I'm in, when I'm in a decimation proc outside of execute window, if that makes sense. So if I was able, like right now, I have a decimation outside of the window that's outside of my execution phase, right? Whether you snipe from an ad or whatever the reason is. Whenever I'm outside of that phase and I'm soul firing, I am not going to re put up a dot because I only have this buff for eight to nine seconds, right? I'm 10 seconds, I guess, but I only, I want to get all those soul fires out and then I'll re put a dot up, which is okay. But what's not okay is what you see me do right here is I got horny because execution phase is coming up. My trinkets are off cooldown. My, my, I got a flame cap I'm getting ready to use. I got 17 seconds on my potion, 24 seconds on my gloves. I'm like horny for those soul fires. You know what I'm talking about, but you can't do that. Hey, hey, settle down, settle the fuck down. Okay willpower you need it boys because you do not want to do this right here this everything's looking fantastic right now i noticed this is where you go okay i'm sending a shadow bolt it's under 35 percent. i'm about to be decimation i'm going to after this one sends i'm gonna early emulate corruption bro no i'm not i'm gonna go throw one right here see how i just went like that i would have finished this shadow bolt because i already cast one actually what would i do let me think about the proper way i would do this I gotta not talk. I can't talk at the same time as I'm thinking. Yep, I would have. I'm already soul firing. So I soul fired early. I don't know what that one came from. I think it came from my proc. I'm at 37%. I'm at 36%. After this shadow bolt sends, I'm corrupting early. I'm going to corruption early just so I can. And then I'm going to emulate afterwards. And that's just so I can. I got my procs lined up right now. I have a fucking sundial going. I have my other trinket coming up. Dark, uh, uh, dying curse coming off cooldown in a half a second. 0.6 seconds. 12 on a potion. 19 on gloves. I'm going to say that all together. Yep. So I'm going to right here. I'll probably corruption and then emulate again. I'm in form right now. Like I'm in decimations already up. I still haven't put an emulate up or a corruption. I still haven't done any of that at all. I still have. Oh, I put a corruption up. Cool. I'm not going to put an emulate up. If I do, I'm trolling. I should have put one up earlier. I didn't put, I shouldn't put one up the rest of the fight. So that fight, the ending looks like here, which is a lot of DPS. I'm missing a lot of DPS right now. This is a significant amount of DPS. I would say, I dare say like at, at worst, I should have right now put up an emulate and a corruption at worst. I didn't even do that. I don't I haven't used my flame cap yet. I haven't used anything yet. And the thing about flame cap is you have to look ahead. I just, this is why I showed, I have footage. I have 12,000 Noth fights. I could show you guys. I specifically showed you this for a reason. I know that in Hygen, I can't use, I, I'm not going to be able to get a good emo aura off because of the beginning of Hygen, which we'll get in a second. I am not using a flame cap here. I'm not, I'm, this is embarrassing. I'm not doing anything right now. There's, I have quite a few little bosses of me doing this, but uh, this is why I'm showing it. So you guys know, keep up your dots when you're in execution phase. Don't pad these ads and spam soul fires, right? I still haven't put an emulate. I emulate is a very big damage. It, emulate is something I feel like everybody sleeps on. I feel like everybody sleeps on emulate. Emulate does a, a very, very good amount of damage. The damage per cast is out of this world. 24 seconds because of your molten core talent. It's a, so insane. Now I would never do this. Like if I look at my footage from last week or the week before, not I didn't do any of this. It was almost perfect, but I wanted to show you this because that's what you shouldn't be doing. Do as I say, not as I do. That is something my wife tells me all the time. I kind of like it. There, so you need to fight. Um, we just spent 19 minutes on the first boss. Cool. Well, good thing there's timestamps, right? Um, next up, we're gonna go to Hygens. For this trash pack right here, this is kind of a meme trash pack. You can do, I guess, they die so fast and you guys are kind of holding W throughout it. You can blow meta here. Meta, this is not a bad thing to blow with here. The problem with it is you can't 
emo aura early on Hygen because you kind of can't do anything with the emo aura on Hygen. So you can either do one of two things. You can blow meta here, right? Like I do. You can blow meta here on this one instance, kill them all down, shatter all the time. Remember, shatter's on a comfy key mine. Don't get stuck behind that mushroom. Coil for some health like I just did. I had 81 health and just lived. Yeah, that's chatter work right there. Usually, by the way, because you guys are... I won. If I'm being fair, I probably shouldn't have done that. I knew that I had bops coming. I were in comms. I knew they would keep me up. But in reality, no one's doing damage but the tank who's running them. So you can actually very easily pull aggro and die there. So just be careful. So when it comes to this boss, I have three footage up for you guys. Okay. Because there's three ways to do this. Yeah. Three ways to do it. Right. We have the bait. You have the normal way. You have the normal way where we uh, fight here. We fight the, 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 the platform here. Is there? Let me see if there's a... Let me see if there's a f editor plan IO thing for this place. There's not, sadly. I think they stopped after PBC. So I can get like a floor map. So you know how uh the you did the normal way is melee's over here, casters are up there with the healers, right? Casters are up here with the healers. Let's see if I can just get up there and show it. All right, this is a normal way. Hey, all you guys are here. You guys are balling out, you're having a blast. Okay. This the problem and then when this dance comes up, you guys move the dance. Now you're either in that guild or you're in the other guild where we're all here and then you guys don't even dance you guys ignore the dance and they just out heal it and then there's another way where it's backwards casters and healers sit over here and the boss is just tanked here the whole fight and they just out heal the slant the stuff it's super easy we have no problem with it then there's another way where you can have the tank pull him here and we will be will be over here and nobody gets the stacks and you guys can just nuke him down and then there's another way which is the fastest way in my opinion which would be the third way i'll show you is you guys pull this but you guys you, you pretty pretty much you have the the you'll see i'll just get to it in a second but anyway if you're doing this way which is the most popular way when you just run up there and you have the casters on the platform it's really hard to get an emo aura off because when are you going to get it off if you guys sit in range and get that debuff that he gets that debuff slows your casting time by a million and by the way if you get that debuff and you put a corruption up or something like that that corruption is on him forever it's like a minute and a half can't get it off it's crazy anyway so this part right here when like normally you want to put your dots up. I'm getting into my position, my position. Once I'm in position, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is make sure everything's up and then blow meta. And then I'm going to pump. The problem with this fight is when are you going to get a meta off? When can you actually get a meta off right here? You, you can get meta off for sure. Let me restate that. When can you get an emo aura off? Normally you would have did it in the beginning. I can't run in there with the emo aura because I'll still get the debuff and the debuff kills you. You can't, it doesn't kill you literally, but it kills your DPS, right? So you can't do anything about it. This is just a normal way. They're not going to dance. Don't worry about the dancing. I know a majority of the people watching this will be doing it this way, which is why I'm predominantly showing this way. Okay. I'm going to life tap. I'm keeping up emulate. I'm keeping up corruption. I'm keeping up doom. I'm spamming shadow bolts. Um, you need to make sure if you're in the guilds that are moving this guy, they're in the dance or whatever like that, whatever they call it, make sure that you are always max range. Otherwise you get that, that debuff, that debuff will kill your DPS more than you think it will. And if you ever do get the debuff, once again, do not put a doom up. Do not put anything up. Don't cap, don't hard, don't put a dot up because it'll ruin your dot. Just pretty much get a long bolt, get a long cast off, get your life tap. If you fuck up, get your life taps back, your mana back up, life tap it up a little bit. Just don't do anything too crazy or it'll hurt yourself in the long run. Anyway, if you are doing the dance, right? Another thing with this fight is killing him before he teleports. This is just like the last fight. This is, this is a crucial thing for your parse. If you're looking at in terms of parsing, um, if you're not looking in terms of parsing and you're looking to do more damage and don't worry about the teleport, but you should try to kill him before the teleport. Okay. I don't have teleport footage footage here to show you what to do during the teleport, but what let's pretend that my mouse cursor is me and he teleported. We switched spots, right? You know, we're running. The poison goes up. We run here. We run here. We run here. You know what you're doing? Nothing. You coil to get some health out. You make sure your corruption doesn't drop at all. You don't really have enough time. If you get real lucky, you can stop and do an emulate really quick. But the problem with it is you'll get, you can fall behind and die. So what I do is I just make sure I, he teleports. I run to here. I put an emulate up, right? And then I just run with him. Try to get a bolt off if you can. I just run with him. You know what I mean? Oh, we're here. I'm just going to try to get an emulate off. See if I can maybe boot if my boot's not on cooldown. And then we're over here. But when we get to the other side, this far left side, that's when I reapply emulate. That's when you reapply it. You can usually get emulate and a shadow bolt off or something. You can get something off. And then when he gets back here, you do the same thing. Um, I know a majority of people aren't killing it before you teleport. So if it, just stay alive, keep corruption up, use your instant cast at all. Any kind of instant cast when you're running out of here, you can shadow flame anything to do cast. If you are in the other people of the guilds where you are killing it ahead of time, you're just doing this strap. The only thing that I can think of to get an emo off now, and this could be super cheesy, but in the beginning right here, like we're precasting. This is what I think I would do. We don't do this strat anymore. So someone try this and let me know. First off, if someone has a better 
idea. Let's teamwork this shit and go to the comments. Okay. Second off, I think this would work here. Someone try it. Let me know. On pool, since you don't have any more wasted, I'm going to precast a shadow ball. I don't do it. I'm going to precast a shadow ball or pre potion, precast a shadow ball, and then I'm going to meta an emo aura right away. I'm going to emo aura right away. Meta, emo aura, emulate, corruption, doom. Now, the reason why, I'm going to sit here for like, bro, I'm going to sit here for like four ticks of my emo aura. You're not, you can't, I tried it, and the fifth tick, I got the, I got the, the debuff so you have to be really picky with it three to four ticks of it and then i'm already getting out of here right I'm not casting anything and then i'm just running out of here now this allows you to be in meta you can boot out of there too but i use my boots for everywhere else pretty much in the i use my boots outside of the bosses because we're trying to go fast versus in the bosses but if you if you have your boots you can port you can not portal but you can boot there too um that allows you this in my in my, my theory is that it allows you to get two three four ticks of emulate off or emo aura you're not gonna get your whole 12 seconds off but you're gonna get six seven six seconds or six seconds off and that is six seconds more than pretty much every demo lock in the world playing this fight right now so unfortunately no well not unfortunately because we do it fast but unfortunately i can't do that i did I, we didn't weren't here long enough for me to try that um but i think that would work great i think you just do that you get a you get otherwise you wouldn't be using any you don't get any emo aura damage right so it's better than nothing i don't know but I do want to show you the guys other way just so you can see it how it looks like right this is one where we all just stand here all the casters stand here in the beginning the entire time and the melee just sit up there. The healers out heal the poison damage. That's it. Nobody moves the entire time. Melee are there. Healers, casters here. And we're blasting the whole time. I'm not going to show you the whole VOD, right? You can, but because that's all it is. Uh, this is a very easy way to take it. I do love this way a lot. Um, once again, no emo aura. You can't even get the cheeky early emo aura off here. So that's a downside to it. And then the last way to do it is what the way we do it because I think it's the fastest way. Besides the platform, which I will link actually i can show you why we're here if you want to see it just i mean just in case you're here and you're like oh what is, what is this other way they're talking about um oh he didn't do the video yet well uh stay at sarts channel and uh did he do it wasn't there a hygen yeah yeah, yeah. actual little poisons that come from the ground one thing that's i just want to give you a little pov from it if you want to see the pov one second is this it it's not it Oh, he hasn't done it yet. He was talking about doing it yet. Okay, well, disregard that. I'm not going to cut that out of this video either. But there's another way um, where everybody can sit on the platform where the tank has a Hygen like right here or something with the melee. And then the casters are on the other side, kind of almost like semi LOS on this. And we're able to cast and not get the debuff. We don't do that as our guild. I think the fastest way is to do it, the, is to do it this way where you guys pull. You pull here normally, right? You guys are pulling here. Here's a pull. We all go. We're pumping here. The melee are running up. Then the tank is going to tank him, pull the boss all the way to the... I'm moving a lot because it's our first time doing this and I don't know what's happening. So don't excuse the fact that I'm moving around so much. Now I know, so we'll be it. Now they're moving him, the boss, to the door and then we're all staying on the platform, blow less and go at it. Um, that, which I'm going to try this week. I might scuff my parse. I'm going to try this week. You see how we're right here this middle? I'm going to blow a meta and emo aura right now. Right now, in the beginning. If we do it this way. I don't know how many of you guys do it this way, but I'm going to go in here, put my stuff up. I'm going to scoot up a little bit more probably. I can imagine... Yeah, actually... Kind of like where I would just like right here. I'm an emo aura and do all that and he'll move him out of the way. And then by the time that he moves him out of the way, we just stand here and we finish blasting. Okay. Lotheb. Mm, is it all over this boss? I hope so. No. All right. Next up. Lotheb. Uh, November, tw October 27th, which is this one. All right. Lotheb. So after Hygen, you got a little bit more trash here. Um, the thing I would say about this trash is you can blow your meta here if you want to, but you're kind of, it's kind of the same thing you did at the last pack where you're the only one attacking and you'll pull aggro. Uh, this is for demo locks, but if you happen to be affliction lock walking, make sure you might, you can kick these mind flays with your, uh, spell lock from your fell hunter. Uh, you can charge in with your fell guard as well. Make sure he doesn't pull anything extra. I mean, nothing really to do here. Just keep running all the way through here. When you get to the end, turn and burn the rest of them down or into the boss. Now with the boss, the only thing, not the only thing, but something that's really important here is the spores, right? We know that the spores are ultra important. Um, you want them. Not only do you want them, but you want to save meta and Emora for when you have the spore buff. Simple. If your guild, your guild is typically waiting for lust for the spores. And if you happen to be watching this and you're more in like a kind of casual guild, which is okay. Um, you can mention that too, that you guys should be lusting when everybody has the spores, or at least a majority of people have the spores, right? And if you're wondering what order to go in, I love the casters and I like the melee. Remember, rogues benefit TLDR, rogues, I'm pretty sure rogues benefit the most from the buff. 
So you're great. So we go like group two, which is our DKs and our rogues, the pumpers. And then we have group four, which is our, our warlocks and everybody else for casters. So I would suggest the order of in that I'd go melee and then warlocks. Um, obviously in a perfect world, you go casters first because I'm selfish as shit. But uh, yeah, as long as you're like first or second to go anyway, or not, you can just free ball. Either way, you don't want to blow your meta and your emo aura until you get lusted. You do not want to blow lust until you get your spores, until everybody has a spore. That is very fine lines on which one you can kind of do. Um, so in the beginning, just do your ro normal rotation and save your meta. I hope for the love of God that I saved my meta for this example, or I'll go to another VOD because there's one VOD that I, oh, I actually pre -po I potioned. I actually use a potion, a haste potion from TBC just now. Don't ask. I use them for trash. I actually just po poked one before I pulled, which kind of sucks. Anyway, war comes out eight seconds. I know it goes to the tanks, the melee first. Unless it comes behind us, literally, then we'll like switch. And be like, all right, casters, get it. Because it's literally like that one. It's literally behind us. Like, what can we do about that? And so because it's behind us, we go try to get it. Um, The spore, in terms of like, I doomed. You see how I already doomed? Doom's not that big of a deal because it doesn't crit. Doom doesn't crit at all. I'm trying to see if this is the same footage that I need. I already blew. I already blew emo aura. This is the wrong footage. Hey, but it's okay. Whatever. We do, we're here. Let's start that again. All right. So save your meta. Like I said in the beginning, save your meta for when you lost. I don't do it here for some reason. I don't know if I'm just, this is three weeks old. I don't know if I'm just being a, an idiot or whatever, but I didn't do it right off rip. So I, this is a long enough fight where I get meta twice. Maybe that's why I did it. I'm not sure, but uh, oh, I have my, oh, I do. I have my buff. I didn't know I got the spore, buff. okay. I got the spore buff and I went in there and that's when I popped meta and emo aura. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had the spore buff. I still should have waited for lust because what they're doing is they're waiting for everybody to get it. Then they lust in a perfect scenario. You can do that. Anyway, once you get your spore, as you saw, once you get your spore, I went, to, I went into meta with sport pop, sport pop, sport pop, sport pop, sport pop, sport pop, sport popped. I'm in meta. When I get up, I'm immolating, I'm corrupting, and then I'm spamming shadow bolts. There's my emulate. I'm going to corruption early, and then I'm going to fucking spam incinerates to clear my molten cores, and then I'm spamming shadow bolts the whole time. And I'm just sitting here in a perfect world. You would have waited for lust, but we're already, we're past that. Nothing I can do about it. When you get to here, do not try to snipe the ads. I've tried it and I got one off, but it was like troll me trying to snipe this. It was like three bolts before. I, it's not worth the time to do it. Keep spamming. You just do this boss the same way you normally would do. The only difference is you waited for the spore buff before you popped your meta. You are reapplying your dots. You're keeping your dots up and you're spamming incinerate, right? You're, remember, you pre-potion with your wild magic. Your your second potion is always wild. Wild magic demonic, demonic pack boys, okay? If you're not a demonic packer and you're just like, don't care, personal DPS, then don't do it. Whatever, that's on you. Um, but doom back up again. I make sure once again, you have glyph of life tap. There's our lust, which means it took that long for everybody to get their buff. This is when I would have suggest this is when I would have preferred to uh, pop my meta and stuff, but I didn't. So that's a mistake on my part. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's nothing really to do here. You can wait for your buff. When it comes to your buff, if I can use this as an example, you see the, the spores way over here. Say you don't have a buff or you do whatever. I've seen too many people trying to get the buff too hard. Like they will literally like right now, if I was to stop DPSing to go run all the way to the spore, get the buff and then run back to the boss. I'm missing like a ton of damage. Like don't do that. Right. In a perfect world, you can run to the spore and damage on the spore, but I don't do this here. Thank God. But, uh, don't do that. I see a lot of people. Do. It's okay to run to the spore if you're going to get the spore, but there's a lot of people who wait too long, run to the spore and then get there, but not get the buff or maybe not quite get it in time. And then they run back to their spot. You see how this mage is pumping out here? Don't be afraid to pump from out here. This isn't that bad because I don't want the spore right away, but you see how he's pumping and he's just standing still. You don't need to go get the spore and then end up running back. Like right here, I ran here for no reason. Look how the spore coming all the way in. I ran for, this is why I use this footage. It's I ran here for no reason. I stopped pumping. I'm blasting, I'm blasting, I'm pressing buttons. I'm shadow bolting. I'm shadow bolting and then I stop shadow bolting to run to this guy. Don't even put a corruption up. Oh yeah, I put a corruption up, thank God. But I run to this spore. The spore's not dead. We can't kill the spore because everybody's not there. And now I'm now I'm shadow bolt scooting up. Shadow bolt scooting up. Shadow bolt scooting up. And I'm doing it during execute phase, which is the worst. Instead of just being patient and just sitting there the whole time and spamming your buttons and spamming your buttons, it would have came out to more DPS. I see everybody I see a lot of people doing this, not everybody. Uh the worst ones is when they'll run they do I've seen people run all the way to Africa over here. And then they, them not get the spore or even worse. They kill the spore themselves. Do not do that. Don't be an asshole. Wait till everybody gets there, bro. How fucking mad would you be if you get there? How many times it happened to you? It happens to me almost every week in my own fusion raid, bro. I get so irritated. All right. Th these guys are doing the buffs. They go there and it'll be fucking destroyed and I'll be mad. Don't do that. We've been guilty of it. 
team player. You got to be a team player. If you're at a spore, fucking pump into the boss until the spore, until everybody is there to get the spore. Let the spore blow up. Get your buff. Keep pumping. Okay. Don't be assholes. Uh, anyway, keep the spore. As for the spore, it goes. I think it goes away now, right? It goes away now. Never mind. It used to be nice because you could keep it for the trash packs, the nest trash packs, and get like big crit on there. But I think they changed it to where it goes away. Where the boss dies, or right when you leave his room or something. For execute. Thank God I'm actually doing it correctly this time and keeping up my emulate and my corruption. That's cool. And spam shadow. I mean spam incinerate. I mean uh, soul fire. Sorry. Um, I probably wouldn't even worry about emulate at the end of the fight like this. I do it anyway. But because we're at that buff, I kind of just want to keep spamming soul fires. Yep. That's it. That's this wing. Um, this wing is very boring. I think a lot of people agree that this wing is very boring. It's just a whole lot of, uh, you know, a couple bosses that are kind of annoying to deal with. You got one, it, especially if you're here, if you're watching this in terms of parsing, it's like, it sucks because you have the first boss, Noth, where you need to get him to teleport. Not everybody's guilds teleporting him. Same with Hygen. You need to kill him before he teleports. Not all, not all guilds are teleporting him, you know? And then obviously Lothab, but Lothab's kind of locked behind guild too. Is your guild lusting when you guys get spores? Are you guys doing some weird, like let the healers get the spores and let the tanks get it type stuff? Like how are you doing? Obviously the tanks shouldn't be getting it because of the threat. It reduces your threat, which I didn't mention in the clip of it, but yeah, I just, oh, the spore. Oh, this is, see, look, I still have the spore buff. This is back when I think they, dude, did they not replace that? Am I stupid? I know you can't do it on bosses. It invalidates the logs. I'm pretty sure that's changed now and it goes away, but either way, hey. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me look at my things. Let's make sure. Oh, 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 yeah. I forgot. I have a note thing here. One thing, make sure your ISB is up. During execution, it's your job to put up ISB. I've been failing effortlessly until like a week or two ago. I've been failing in this. Okay. Your job as a demon on a demonology warlock is to keep up shadow, keep up ISB. If you're watching this and you think it's the afflictions job, it's not the afflictions job. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. They don't use nightfall. They shouldn't be using Nightfall in their drain rotation. If they're executing and they're drain light, drain souling, I'm sorry, their haunt will naturally keep up Shadow Embrace. They do not need to worry about using their Nightfalls. And the only time you would ever Nightfall is on Affliction Lock is if you're moving or if you severely mess up and you can't, your under hit cap, your haunt misses and you need to keep your, your, your corruption rolling and like Shadow Embrace up or something like that. There's, there's very rare occasions where, or you're moving. Very rare occasions that you would not, you would be using your Nightfall procs. So I say that because there's a couple comments of people saying that to use nightfall procs. If you don't, um, meta then dots. It's okay to dot meta then dot again, but make sure you're not overlapping too much. Uh, corruption, immolate, and doom all get 20% damage, higher damage per cast. I said it earlier. Um, what else? Let's see. Let me look at my noties. Let me look at my notes, bro. I just want to make sure I got all this for you guys, man. Uh, oh, ISP. Yeah, ISP. It's your job. Just keep it up. Throw a rank one out there. Uh, you can throw a rank max rank if you want. The difference is. You know, you two and a half second cast versus a one second cast and soul fire is giga damage. Like a soul fire non crit is almost as much as a crit shadow bolt. So, you know what I mean? You might as well just, I just throw one up just so I can continue throwing them as much as I can. And, uh, oh, I think that's it. I'm forgetting something for sure. Someone's going to yell at me. Uh, but can you guys do me a favor and, uh, go to the comments if we missed anything, try to help anybody. If you are in a giga guild, uh, and you know, tips that I don't do to help each other out, bro, this is not a competition. I'm not over here trying to brag about shit. Like if you're a try hard, sweaty person, don't talk shit, fucking help people out. Like I see too many people over here like, yeah, you're actually pretty stupid because shut the fuck up. I know I'm stupid. Help people out. Don't just hate people in the, don't hate on people in the comments. That's not where a vibe over here. Don't, we don't need to do all that. You know what I mean? So if you got tips that we don't have, unless you're like in some giga guild that can't tell their secrets, help each other out. Go to the war like this sword. God damn it. One stop shop for everything warlock related. Check out any of these beautiful work. I mean, Warlock streamers. Me, Pummel. It's Pummel on Twitch. These are both Demo Lock Chads. Take note. I'm not flipping you off at the same time. It kind of worked out. Take note. Alondo, Nemo. We got a bunch of, of, there's more than that that play, that play the game. These are just avid streamers that I know that I trust that you can just be giga. NLG on YouTube. Look them up. If you're affliction and you're wondering, there's a lot of sorts, sites and sources out there to help people out. Wowhead, I do all the icy veins guys for Warlock. Stefan, the other admin in Warlock Discord does all the Wowhead guys. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Also, I stream six days a week where you can ask any question you want. That's cool. And I pretty much will answer it. Yeah, because I just have no life and I play this game a lot. And my whole family's sick, so I'm going to be glued to my computer. Okay, I'm going to shut up. 
So yeah, see you tomorrow. I promise you tomorrow I'll do the I'll do the, I'll do it by the way. I'm back on schedule. I gotta drop my wife at the airport tomorrow and then I'm I'm doing it right early tomorrow morning. Like nine o'clock Pacific time. I'll have it up for you guys. Maybe earlier. Okay. Eight. Peace.